Welcome to the second part of the lecture on path tracking. Having said about uh, the explicit and uh, implicit constraints, let's look at uh, finally the representation of the solution. Now, in case of uh, eight queens problem, the solution can be expressed as an eight tuple, as I said earlier comprising of the values of x1, x2, x3, up to x8, where of course xi represents the column number in which the queen i is placed in row i. One possible solution to the problem, which you have already seen, is 4, 6, 8, 2, 7, 1, 3, 5. This is one solution. Of course, there are other solutions also and obviously this solution satisfies column constraints and the diagonal constraints. So the solution often as we said at the beginning is expressed in the form of an n tuple and in the case of 8 queen problem it would be an 8 tuple and in the case of 4 tuple, 4 queen problem it would be a 4 tuple. So, we can summarize now. We have seen all the three aspects related to n queen problem. And of course, I talked about the eight queen problem and as well four queen problem, whichever is convenient at different points of time. In uh, either case, we have seen what is solution space, what is the size of the solution space, and how the solution space can be organized. And a most important uh, concept called a state space tree, which is frequently used in backtracking, which is more amenable for implementing backtracking. And then we have seen what are uh, implicit constraints, explicit constraints, the constraints to be satisfied, the formulation of constraints to be satisfied by the problem at hand. And of course, we have seen. Uh, how a solution is represented as an n tuple. Now let's look at uh, another problem that can be solved by backtracking, and let's try to focus on these three aspects: solution space, constraints to be satisfied, and then the representation of the solutions. One more application that is elegantly solved by backtracking is the sum of subsets problem. Let's look at the definition of the sum of the subsets problem. You are given positive integers. Of course, at times we call them as weights also. The words integers and weights are interchangeable. You are given n integers or n weights. In other words, you are given wi, 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n. And you are given another integer, m. And the statement of the problem says that you have to find all subsets of wi, all subsets of the integers given, all subsets of the weights given, such that the sum of these weights or the sum of the integers is equal to m. Let's look at an example. n is equal to 4, m is equal to 31, which means you are given 4 weights or 4 integers, and the sum value is equal to 31. And the 4 integers given w1, w2, w3, w4 are 11, 13, 24, and 7. These are the 4 integers. Now you have to find out all subsets of the set 11, 13, 24, 7 such that the sum of the numbers in that subset will be equal to m. The solution can be expressed in two ways. You can represent the solution as a variable size tuple or you can represent the solution as a fixed size tuple. So this is another aspect of uh, backtracking 
in uh, representing the solution variable size tuple representation and fixed size tuple representation now let's see variable size tuple representation is in the form of x1 x2 xp where value of p may vary depending upon the number of integers considered in the solution or the number of weights considered in the solution and quite obviously 1 less than or equal to p less than or equal to n because there are maximum of uh, n integers so at most you can choose n integers so you have a variable size tuple x1 x2 xp such that the sum of w x1 w x2 w x3 w x p will be equal to m let's illustrate with an example n equal to 4 m equal to 31 and the four weights given are 11 13 24 7 so one possible solution which consists of uh, three weights x1 x2 x3 is 1 comma 2 comma 4 which means that the first weight is included the second weight is included and fourth weight is included so here we find that uh, 11 plus 13 plus 7 is equal to 31 and uh, this purports to be a solution x1 x2 x3 is equal to 1 to 4 the second possible solution is x1 comma x2 equal to 3 comma 4 means the third and fourth weights are included others are not included 24 plus 7 once again is equal to 31 so the solution is either 1 2 4 or 3 4 and you find that this is a variable size tuple representation it's not a fixed size tuple representation because here there are three elements in this tuple where are whereas there are two elements in this tuple. Now let's try to enumerate what is the size of the solution space. Can you just find out uh, what is the size of the solution space? How many possible candidates are there? Out of which a few of them can be the solutions by satisfying the implicit and explicit constraints. The size of the solution space is 2 power n, where n is the number of given integers, or n is the number of given weights. The enumeration is obvious because you have set comprising of uh, n weights or uh, n integers and there are two power n possible subsets of set comprising of n elements and any one of these two power n possible subsets may be eligible to be the solution and hence the size of the solution space is two power n and then what are the explicit and implicit constraints? Explicit constraints talk about the possible values that can be taken up by x1, x2, xp. Implicit constraints define the constraint imposed by the problem statement. Here, the explicit constraint is that xi can take on the values 1, 2, 3, 4. So 1 less than or equal to xi less than or equal to 4 is the explicit constraint. And then what is the implicit constraint? The implicit constraint is the weights considered should sum up to m. So we find that w of x1 w of x2, w of x3 should sum up to 31. So the implicit constraint is sigma i equal to 1 to p because it's a variable size tuple 
and there could be p values. So sigma i is equal to 1 to p w x i, where x i is the suffix, w x i should be equal to m. So that's what you see here. 1 less than or equal to x i less than or equal to 4 is the explicit constraint. And sigma i is equal to 1 to p, where i equal to 1 to p represent the values that are present in the variable size tuple w x i is equal to m. So, for example, in this case, x1 is 1. So, this x i is replaced by 1. So, w1 plus x2 is 2. So, w2 plus x3 is 4. w3. So, w1 plus w2 plus w4 is equal to m. Similarly, this solution says that w3 plus w4 is equal to m. So this is about uh, variable size double representation of the solution for the sum of subsets problem. The fixed size double representation will be in the form x1, x2, xn. If there are n weights, then the solution also will have n values in the tuple. For the same problem, we find that one possible way of expressing the solution x1, x2, x3, x4 equal to 1, 1, 0, 1. What do these values mean? These values means x1 equal to 1 means the first weight is included. x2 equal to 1, the second weight is included. x3 equal to 0, the third weight is excluded, it's not included. x4 equal to 1, the fourth weight is included. So, this also serves expressing the solution and this form of expressing the solution is called as fixed size tuple representation. Obviously, it is called as fixed size tuple representation because the tuple always consists of n values in the form of zeros and ones. Whereas in variable size tuple representation, you have p values where p may vary from 1 to m. And the second possible solution is once again is a fixed tuple which consists of four values and it is 0, 0, 1, 1, which means that the third and fourth weights are included. Now let's try to answer a few questions. What are the explicit and implicit constraints here? The explicit constraints talk about the possible values xi can take on. So in this case, the possible values x i can take and take on are 0 and 1. So that is the explicit constraint. What is the implicit constraint? The implicit constraint as defined by the problem itself is sigma i is equal to 1 to m, x i w i should be equal to m, where x i is either 1 or 0 depending upon the ith weight is included or excluded. So, this is the explicit constraint x i equal to 0 or x i equal to 1. And because it is a fixed tuple representation, you always have n values present in the answer. And these n values correspond to the values of x i, which represent the ith weight is included or excluded. And hence, the implicit constraint is expressed as sigma i equal to 1 to n x i w i or w i x i is equal to m. So that concludes the preliminary aspects of backtracking, notations involved, formalisms and a couple of examples which explain different aspects of backtracking. And finally, what is the size of the solution space? The size of the solution space once again is 2 power n. The reason is we know that the solution is expressed in the form of a fixed size tuple which consists of n values and each value can be either 0 or 1. So, two possibilities are there. So, 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 n times. So, the size of the solution space is 2 power n. So, we find that in either case either it is the variable size tuple representation or fixed size tuple representation, 
the size of the solution space is 2 power n. So that brings us to the end of uh, looking at the basic aspects of backtracking and uh, illustrations of backtracking with the help of a couple of examples and Queen's problem and some of uh, upset's problem. We end the second part of the lecture here. Thank you.